you may be wondering what is Amazon CloudWatch. It is a monitoring and observability service for AWS cloud resources and the applications you run on AWS. By default, Amazon RDS automatically sends metric data to CloudWatch in one minute periods. So for example, the CPU utilization metric records a percentage of the CPU utilization for a DB instance over time. Data points with a period of 60 seconds are available for 15 days. This means that you can access historical information and how your web application or service is performing. It provides you the ability to send alarm or alerts whenever a threshold is breached. To access CloudWatch, from the search bar, search for CloudWatch. Then select CloudWatch. So here you're landed on the main dashboard where you should get started. You have the ability to set up alarms, create and name your own dashboard, monitor systems using existing application logs and custom logs, and write rules to indicate which event are of interest to your application and what automated actions to take. So we're going to be looking at a default dashboard. So from this section that says overview, select service dashboards, then scroll down to RDS. So this is a out of the box dashboard that is created by AWS. You can select add to dashboards. So I'm going to select add. So here I'm going to select create new, provide the name of your dashboard. I'm just going to call this RDS Udemy. Then select create. Then select add to dashboard. So basically this becomes my default dashboard for RDS. So from the top menu, you can switch between different time intervals. The default is three hours. So if I select one hour, you'll get an overview of what took place for the last hour on my database instance. So these are some of the same metrics that you would have seen from the monitoring page and enhanced monitoring. You have the ability to maximize a single dashboard. You can change your time intervals. You can change from average to maximum, minimum spike, things like that, right? So I'm going to close this dashboard for now. So this dashboard will just pretty much give you an overview of your database and metrics that you want to monitor. You could add additional metrics to this dashboard by selecting add, select your widget. So I'm just going to say gauge here, select next. On the browse, you're going to select the RDS, select your database instance identifier. I'm going to go with the Udemy and I'm just going to go with CPU utilization. Here you can specify a name for your graph. So I'm just going to call this CPU gauge. Select apply. We need to specify the gauge options. So the minimum is zero and the maximum is 100. So now I'm going to select create widget. So here you'll see a nice little overview of what percentage of my CPU is currently being utilized. So now that we have created our dashboard, Let's say we want to get a notification whenever the CPU hits 80%. We can do this by creating an alarm. So select the menu icon here, select alarms, select in alarm, it will navigate to the alarm page. Then select create alarm. We're going to be selecting a metric that we want to monitor. So select metric and under browse, we're going to select RDS, select DB instance identifier, and then select the metric that you want to monitor. So for simplicity, I'm going to just be going with CPU utilization. Select metric at the bottom here. Here, we're going to define the conditions under which we want to be notified. For the statistics, we can keep it as average. However, you have the option to choose from a range of values. So for example, you could do some are here maximum, so average is fine. So if the CPU has a sustained spike for 15 minutes, then hey, I want an alert, right? Scroll down. Here you can choose your conditions, whether the threshold be static, whether it be anomaly detection. So in this case, it will use a band as a threshold. And for the static, it will use a value as threshold. So here I'm going to define the conditions. So I want it when the threshold is greater than and here I'm going to specify the threshold. So whenever it is greater than 90%, then I will get an alarm. Under additional configuration, then select next. So the default option here is 
select an existing SSN topic. However, I don't have an SSN topic as yet. SSN stands for Simple Notification Service. So I'm going to create a new topic. So I'm going to keep the default name here. Here, specify the email that you want to receive the notification. Then select Create Topic. So whenever my threshold is breached, I will get a notification to this email. Please keep in mind that Amazon will send you an email for you to confirm your email. So scroll down. Here you have the option to add an auto scaling action. So if you select add auto scaling action, you'll see a list of options to choose from. However, I do not want to add an however, I do not want to add an auto scaling action at this point, so I'm going to select remove. Here we're going to select next. Now you need to specify a name for your alert and you can specify a description as well. So here I'm just going to give this a name as high CPU usage. So here I just received the AWS notification that I must confirm my email. So let's confirm subscription, right? So let's go back to the AWS console. Here you will just specify a description. So I am just going to say ICPU for Udemy database. Now select next. So once you have completed your description, then select next. So here's a preview of the alert you create. So whenever it spikes up to this level, it will send a notification. So here's the condition. It is a static value. Whenever it is greater than 90%, for the actions, it will send us a notification, right? And this is just the name and description. Then you're going to select create alarm. So whenever this alarm has been triggered, you will see it in the in alarm section. When you select all alarms, you will see the alarms that you define. Now here in the action section, if you do not confirm your email, it will be showing up in a red value. You also have the ability to view logs from your CloudWatch console. So when we're creating the database, you would have seen we have the option to publish Postgres logs, the logs that would be generated in your Postgres database directly by Postgres, then you could have those published to your CloudWatch logs as well. So let's look at the logs here. It is a new feature. So we can do the live trail. From your filter, we only have the RDS. You will only be seeing the RDS option, right? So here I'm going to select apply filters and will automatically start monitoring my database log live. So here we have one result in our live trail. Again, this is not a active database, so you will not be seeing a lot. Now let's go back to the menu and select login sites. This will provide you insights into your logs, right? So here it has a default query. It will grab the timestamp, message, log stream, log and sort it by date time, right? So let's run this query from the drop down from the drop down, select your log metric, right? And then select run query. So this will pretty much provide you with some insight into your log. So instead of the live logs, you'll see, you can see all the logs that were generated in the last one hour. So you can change your time frame here as well. Now when we select run query again, it will provide data for the last 30 minutes. So you can just view the logs or you can view visualization. So currently there is no visualization available, right? You could do line, you could do byte bar, and you could even do a pie chart. So the log analytics will provide great insight into your logs. So those are some of the key features that you'll utilize with Amazon CloudWatch.